story about the very first Christmas, a story about a very holy night. The night was very cold. It had been a busy couple of days. There were many more people in Bethlehem because of the decree sent out by Caesar Augustus. He had called for every person in the entire Roman world to go to the town where they were born to be registered. So the town of Bethlehem had been buzzing for days. All of the shops and all the inns had been especially busy. There was one inn on the outskirts of town that was seldom full, but on this night, they had filled every room. So Joseph and Mary followed the innkeeper back to his stables. They were indeed worn with the earthly smells that only a stable can have. But they found that it was not so unpleasant, and besides, they were very grateful to have found it. <coughs> shepherd boy was doing what his father and his father's father had done for many years, tending to their sheep and making sure no harm would come to them. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to 
to all people. For there is born to you in this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this is the sign of who you shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men. shepherd were afraid, but the angel told him that there was no reason to fear. As the angels departed, the shepherd decided he would go and find this baby that the angels had told him about. So he started his journey using the stars for direction. There were also three wise men from the east who had heard stories about the Christ child. They too decided to travel to find him. They saw the star and recognized its significance. So they came to Bethlehem bearing gifts for this new king. When they found him, they bowed down and worshipped him, offering their treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thank <laughs> you. 
And so he stumbled in, and the man prepared a simple one-course meal of cheese and crackers. They had great conversation. They laughed. It wasn't a few minutes after the king had been there. He got used to the smell and the room and the situation. And therefore, they visited for a, a late in the hour. And finally, the king, dressed as a peasant, excused himself, and he slipped away into, as it were, his real robes, his real life, and everything that his life was full of. Well, he couldn't stand it. After a day or two, he decided, I've got to go back, and I'm going to reveal who I am. Now, I know this sounds like a television show to you. Have you seen uh, Undercover Boss? Have you seen this? And so he comes back, and he comes down, and, and, and he has all his robe, robe clothes on, and he's with uh, uh, several horses and his guards, and they, they come to the man's house, and they walk into, again, the dank, dark basement. And he introduced himself. Do you remember me? I came to you the other day, and we had a meal. And the, the man was squinting, but he, he recognized the face. But the clothes, of course, were very different. And he said, oh, oh, my. I can't believe it. you're my king. And the king thought for sure, once he revealed who he was, that the peasant would ask for many gifts, uh, money, clothes, food, but to his surprise, he didn't do it. He didn't ask for anything. The man began to cry. The poor man began to cry. And he said, I can't believe you, the king, would leave your palace. I can't believe you would take off all your royal clothes and you would come and visit me as a peasant in this dark dungeon. I am so grateful to you just for the time that we spent and the short friendship that we had in our lives. And I read that story and I thought, that's not only the story of undercover boss, that's the story of Christ. Yes. He, he left heaven. He left the throne. He decided, I want to reach my people. I love my people. I care for the human race. And so he came down, took on the form of a man. I know to us that's not a big deal. But when you're God and you take on the form of man, that would be a large, large exchange, yes or no. Amen. And so today, we come and we worship the king who has come into our lives. And as you have your candle, let your light so shine before men, Matthew 5, 16 says, so that your great deeds can glorify the Father at Christmas time. We seek to do good things, love people, care for people, worship God. Through honoring the Savior. Man, our kids did a great job. In a minute, we're going to appreciate them. But I'd like for you to bow your heads right now. I, I, I want to pray and invite the Lord to speak. If you'd like, if your candle's getting short, you want to blow your candle out, you can blow it out now. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the gift of your son. Truly, as your believers, we are so grateful for the relationship we have with the King through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you tonight for the Holy Scriptures that our young people have learned and the story that's been told. Our, our church has received it. Lord, I pray that you're glorified and honored stories that's told. As well, Lord, <clears throat> I pray for every soul that's in this room. I pray that every soul is in constant, fervent communication with you today. And I pray that Christmas would revive that communication, that on a daily basis we would worship, on a daily basis we would be active in your word and glory. Thank you, Father. still closed this morning, or this evening, I should say. I, I want to tell you about uh, the sun. 
The son comes, not to give you, somebody said, well, I tried being Christian for a while, it didn't really help me much. I, I, I didn't get a better job, and I didn't get to very happy, and didn't save my marriage, and so I just kind of gave up on it. Let me tell you, the son didn't come to give you what you wanted, like winning the lottery. The son came so that you can have a relationship with the father. And that's what Christmas is all about. And so tonight, I want to give you a chance to begin a relationship with the father. By confessing your sins, not out loud, just between you and the Lord, and asking Christ not to join our church, not to give you a, a great gifts, but to ask the Son to forgive your sins so that you can start a relationship with the Father. And, and we had somebody do this this morning in our service. So I'm going to ask you, just between you and the Lord, in your heart, not out loud, between you and him, you might whisper this prayer and you say, God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I'm thankful that you sent your son to die for me. And today, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I take you right now as my Savior. Lord, I pray this evening for every soul that is here. I pray, Lord, that you would be encouraged by the relationship that we have through our Savior. I pray for the one or two that may have whispered that prayer this evening. They may have accepted you as Lord and Savior. Made that exchange. Lord, I pray that they would let us know so we can celebrate and can begin a new walk in you. Thank you, Father, for all of our kids. Wendy, her team. Thank you for the hard work. I pray, Father, that this make a lasting impression in their minds of how important Christmas is. Thank you, Father, for your patience with us. We love you. These things we pray in your name. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. Man, they did an awesome job. Did. Didn't they? Applause. Oh.